energy out there. You know, uh, we try to let uh, our vets call plays, run the entire operation there when the, for the young guys' scrimmage so they get a feel for kind of what it's like right from the other side because I think it's an important perspective. So obviously they uh, they get mad if people don't execute the plays they call. And, and it's good, it's good uh, practice. It's, it's fun for both sides of the ball and for everybody to kind of compete. Anybody have a future as a coordinator? Uh, Trenton Bourget. I mean, that guy's Trenton, I think Crook, I think Alfred could, I think all those guys could. Anybody that doesn't have a future? Uh, uh, a lot. <laughs> no, but, I mean, that's part of the growth. I mean, it's there's probably a few guys out here that will end up coaching, which is pretty cool. Um, having more time to process uh, the areas you want to self-scout, what areas have you guys been holding in on self-scouting? Yeah, we've really just focused on shrinking back to what we're good at. Right, not getting carried away in what the opponent does. Obviously, you have to create game plans, right? But not saying, let's put in four different things specifically for this opponent. Let's saying, hey, let's pull from a menu of things that we're good at and what are the best things from this menu versus this team, not what is the best thing that you could run versus this. Because, a really, like I said in my press conference, a really good play uh, operated or run poorly is a bad play. So let's run good plays that we can execute. Maybe not a great scheme, that we can execute poorly. We got to find that balance. And like I said, I think that's my fault because I'm 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 a scheme guy. I love scheme. Um, absolutely love it. So I go to both sides of the ball. The worst thing they could see here. The worst thing they could see. And that's just how my brain thinks. And even when I was a coordinator, I had to, I had people around me that would checks and balance me to be like, yeah, but we've only repped that three times all year. So I think it's uh, it's good for us to really just get back to the meat and potatoes of who we are. Obviously, the extra rest and the extra preparation time is good for a bye, but you know, what are some of the challenges over the years that you've seen that are for a team coming off a of bye? Yeah, obviously, you know, your body's rested, but is your conditioning level lower? You know, when you don't push like you normally push on a game week, right, does that, does that bring your conditioning level lower? And then how hard is that to actually get back up to the level you were before the bye? So, you know, we're trying to get a couple of these practices during the bye week at 85% of a normal practice because some really part, smart people tell us that if you're at 85%, uh, the science says you won't lose conditioning levels, or that's what I was told, right? I didn't do the science, right? But uh, so we're gonna try to hit one of these days out here, try to hit that level, we're monitoring that, and then make sure everybody on our team hits a top speed here one of these three days. So, because uh, we won't hit those top speeds on game days on Saturday, that way we don't lose our top speed. What does a bye week Saturday look like for you? Uh, hopefully on the couch watching games with the wife and the little guy uh, and doing not much of anything. And then when I get bored of watching games, going back and forth between watching film on my couch of the future opponent, right? Football and more football and then more football, right? Uh, but I love just, I mean, I love college football. I love football in general. So being able to watch it on, on an off week as a, as a fan, as much as you can, watch it as a fan, watch it as a fan, and then being able to watch games and watch film at the same time, right? Hopefully we'll order some good food and we'll rub out. Outside of TCU Kansas, any games in particular that you'll be interested, interested in watching on Saturday outside of the ones in the to, to be honest, I don't even know. Uh, I know Arizona Utah is playing. Other than that, I don't know any other game. I know Alabama Georgia's this week, right? Yeah. I think, okay. Other than that, I don't, I don't know any other game that's being played. I'm horrible at current events. With the commanders here, how much are you talking to Cliff and are you perhaps bringing guys to practice, anything like that? To be honest, we haven't at all. You know, they're in season mode. They don't want us to, just like I wouldn't want a team to come meet with us midweek, game week, and be like, hey, teach me what your thoughts are in three by one GT counter compliments. Like, no. Right now, uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably run into them eventually. But we've got our job to do when we're in the office. They've got their job to do when they're in the office. And time for me to network and do all that crap, that's in the off season on my own time. That's not on the time where I could be helping our guys get better. Yeah, I mean, I think our guys know that there was a lot of self-inflicted wounds. And uh, like I, I told them, like, it's partly the standard has slowly dropped. You know, we've started meetings four minutes early a couple days. The locker room has been dirtier than it has been, and I haven't held them accountable. And uh, that's, a, that's them, but it's them being a reflection of the standard, right? And uh, we've lowered the standard uh, through a little bit of success, and that's my fault. And like I told them, we got to get back to the standard that we had all spring, all summer, 
and uh, we've had that the last or today in particular. Um, everybody was early, like they have been. Nobody's ever been late. It's more the five-minute early standard. But uh, we're we're trying to just focus on what got us to that fast start, what got us to play with that passion, what got us to play with that energy. And uh, so, yeah, the loss motivates it, but it's just as much the loss gives you a reason to really double down on why those things matter. How do you keep the guys mentally focused to not lose that moment? Yeah, I think just competitive and trying to do things like we did at the end of practice where they're calling the plays and they're being engaged. And uh, like I tell them, we got to bring the fun. You know, the monotony of a season's hard. It's hard. Not many teams can consistently stay up the entire time, right? We got a bye weeks supposed to break up the monotony while still getting work and have a little fun, bring a little juice back. And uh, I think that's what those practices at the end are doing. They're bringing a little juice, a little competitive edge back to the field in a practice setting, and hopefully that kind of converts to a Tuesday, Wednesday practice uh, next week. How do the um, times like that in the practice you guys <laughs> Oh, it's great. Not only is it great for them to just go through the progressions and get our defense and our offense run full speed, it's great because the other players are coaching them, which means the leadership aspect of having to listen to a peer and those guys having to coach them is great for the offseason because you're used to listening to guys older than you. We're, we're giving them an opportunity to lead. So I think for both sides of it, not only is it helping them become closer as a team. I think it's helping them get the full live speed reps of our offense and our defense and not just trying to scout team. Awesome.